Yo, what's up gamers? It's Abby Elias here and welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm sorry for it not being a regular Minecraft video. It's just that I have been seeing a lot of questions on how I do my animated subtitles. So I figured that I should make a main channel video teaching those who are interested on how I do my subtitles. And as an added bonus, I am also going to be recreating Tommy in its subtitle style as well. So if you also want to learn how to create that, this tutorial will also help. Help you there. So basically, this tutorial is like subtitling 101. I'm going to be using Vegas Pro 17, although I feel like editing softwares like Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve and stuff like that will probably have similar concepts when it comes to subtitling. So first of all, let's check our project settings. We're working with 60 frames per second. I feel like most people have 60 frames per second as their project settings. If you have something more, then it might be a bit difficult to follow through with this tutorial, but for the sake of being uniform, I think it's best for all of us as of now to use 60 frames per second. You can also copy the rest of these project settings if you want, but that's not really the main part of this video. So the first thing you want to do is go to your media generators and scroll to where you see titles and text so you could see that there's a lot of options here you want to click on the first one and drag it into the timeline you'll see something like this pop up and the text starts out in the very center of the screen i think the first thing you want to do is go to the location and try to put it to around 18 on this second value, which is the Y value. I put it to around 18. Some other people could make it higher or lower, it really depends. But the sample clips that I showed at the beginning of the video had the location at 0.18 on the Y axis. And the next thing to do is set the font size. You can select all of the text by hitting Control A and then you change the font size to 22. I feel like this is the size that works best for me. You can play around with it. When it comes to font styles, you could really just get creative. Most of my videos lately have been using the font Monster Rat. All of the fonts are arranged in alphabetical order. Okay, here's Monster Rat. This is what I usually use lately for my subtitles. Now that you've set a font family, a font size, and positioned the text, I think we could play around with some colors a bit. For my videos, usually I have a pink color as the solid color of the text. You could set your text to any color that you want but i'm gonna do some sort of light pink and then as you can see here there's like a little drop down for outline you can use this slider to put an outline width as you can see here you can change over here what the preview quality you want best full is the most hd preview but sometimes it will lag out your computer if it's always on best full i usually keep it at preview quarter or draft quarter also works if your pc is slower but then if you have it on draft quarter you can't really see the text that well i recommend preview quarter at least if you're editing the style of your text all right so for the outline color i usually go with the darker tone of this solid color so i could use the eyedropper tool and pick the text color and then just make it slightly darker you can also follow along if you'd like. This is the color that I want. Also, don't mind me, but I'm probably going to just put a solid white color here since working on a black background could be kind of confusing, especially for the next part where we're gonna add a shadow. So there's a little drop down here for shadow. You can enable the shadow, which will make a little text shadow here. It looks kind of odd, so what I usually do is I change the color from black to something that's pretty close to black but not entirely so around this color because i want it to still match like the pink color but just a really dark pink and then we can play with the shadow offset this controls the y-axis and the one on the top controls the x i usually make it close to zero zero but not super close like around here is fine you can copy these values if you want but you can just play around to what you think looks best this slider is for shadow blur which is basically how much there is blur on the shadow duh if you set it to zero the shadow is very defined and as you go up there's just a bigger amount of blur i usually put mine around here because i don't really want it to be super sharp 
I want it to be softer, so I put it around here. So there we have it. We have a text style. Oh yeah, before I forget to mention, you can actually save this text preset where all of your styles are already saved by putting a name here over in preset you can name it whatever you'd like like you can just go ham with that and then you just press this save preset button once you click it the next time you go into your titles and text you can find it somewhere well i have a lot of text presets saved but you can see here that i have the saved text thing and you could just drag it into any project you'd like and it will already have the styles on there already anyways now that i've said that i want to make the first text say hello just like the sample clip i showed at the start of the video and then we could just exit out of here and go into pan and crop this is the main thing that will allow you to keyframe the text in order to make a animation so that it's not just a plain text that just pops in and then pops out make sure you have the sync cursor button highlighted blue that's very important make sure it's blue and make sure you're at the very start of the timeline you can click on this icon to change what axis it's locked on we're gonna make it locked in the y axis it might be a bit confusing because you might be like wait you're moving the box up but then the text is going down vegas is just built like that okay <laughs> anyways what you want to do is move it down but not really out of the frame well you can actually do that but based on experimenting i feel like somewhere around that area but not out of the frame is good as long as the text goes below where it was originally standing it's all right so let's put it around here and then we can go around 10 frames forward you can use your arrow keys to move frames so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten you could see here that we're on frame 10 and then what we're gonna do is right click hit restore but we shouldn't leave it like this okay we're going to move it so that the text goes a bit above of where it's supposed to go because this is gonna create a bounce effect that i'm going to show a bit later but we're just setting up the earlier keyframes we have it overshoot the place where it's supposed to be and then we're going to go around five to six frames forward honestly you can play around with the animation yourself but here we go one two three four five six and then we're going to move this text to make it so that it's slightly below the place where it's supposed to be. So like just slightly, like ever so slightly. Like if this is the normal position, just move it a bit down there. And then you go five or six frames forward again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Finally hit restore. You're basically done, except you have to right click the first keyframe, set it to fast. And all of these three keyframes should be set to smooth. You can select multiple keyframes by holding shift and then just clicking on them. And then you just need to right click and choose the right one which is smooth. And then for the first keyframe, it's fast. So this is how the animation looks like right now. It looks pretty good. Of course, we could always play around with all of the positions to get it just the way you want. If you want to move the hello out of the frame, I think that also works, to be honest. You can also make the overshoot a bit more harsh. And then the third keyframe, you can also move it so that it goes a bit more down. And you can even play around with the spacing of the keyframes. For example, if I want to move the fourth frame two frames forward, it might improve something. We made some changes and this is how it looks now. Now you might be asking, Abby, do you do this every single time you change the text? And I say, no, you don't. I think I would go insane if I were to do that. So now we have to figure out how to change the text and apply the same animation to that new text without it being a pain in the butt. This is how I do things. So example, the next line that I want to say is this but then it's like a kind of stutter based on what we've seen in the sample video. Go to the point 
in the text where you want it to say the next line. I want the line to change somewhere here. Press S on your keyboard and make sure this text layer is highlighted a yellow color. As you can see, this is me not selecting it. This is me selecting it. Make sure it's highlighted yellow. Press S. And as you can see, it is now cut into two parts. Now what's next to do is go back to your video media generator. If you don't know how I got here, basically there's this icon here that leads to this. Or you can right click and edit generated media. Anyways, we're back here because we have to click this clock little icon here that is animate. And this allows us to animate what the text says. So if I change this to V with a dash there, since we're at this point where it is cut, everything before is the hello and then everything after is the thing that I just typed right now. Now that we have two parts, we can actually right click on the first clip hit copy and then right click on the second clip and select paste event attributes what this will do is basically take the pan and crop keyframes that we had in the first clip and then copy it over to here as you can see so if we play this back they will actually both have the same keyframe animation I'm gonna do this one more time and just type in a subtitle tutorial with an exclamation point and then paste event attributes and then boom we have a full keyframed animated text animation thing isn't that really cool and the thing is now that you actually have this you can just copy and paste this to whatever vegas project you have so you don't have to keep on doing this over and over and over again which is pretty neat i actually have another way of making subtitles which looks 10 times smoother because of the use of plugins if you want to learn how i do that make Make sure to leave a like on the video i don't really think i'm gonna showcase it here in this video because i don't think everyone here has plugins the plugin that i use for smooth text animations is called sapphire plugins i'm gonna show a clip of a text animation that i used using sapphire plugins on the screen right now and yeah if you want to learn how to do that just leave a like on the video i'm sure i could probably make a tutorial on my second channel or something like a follow-up video now we're going to be talking about recreating the tommy in it style subtitles that you saw at the preview clip at the start of the video drag another sample text over here do the same thing set it to 0.18 change the font size to 22 these are just stuff we did previously and then this is an important thing to match tommy and its subtitles you need the right font which is dosis just search the font up i'm sure you'll find it just make sure you have the entire text selected and just click on bold so that the text is bolded a bit and usually tommy's text color is always just white for the outline i'm going to set the color to pink because that's my color you know that's my signature color that i always use i'm going to change it to this kind of hue and i'm gonna turn on the white background again because i kind of need it for the shadow once again so make sure you have shadow enabled this just looks bad. Tommy in it has the shadow usually at 0, 0. I think it's usually black, but I'm just going to make it like a dark shade of pink so that it doesn't look too harsh. And I think the shadow blur looks pretty good already. You can just play around to what looks the best. I'd say around here is good, like around the point threes is good for this. Maybe a bit less. It honestly just depends on what looks right to you. Again, you could save this as a preset to whatever you want. Just make sure you have the save icon right there. And the next time you go into titles and text, you'll find it there. Again, I'm going to put a hello at the start. And then I am going to go to my pan and crop. And I am going to animate this. Tommy in it actually has like a really, really simple but smooth text animation. So let's just try to recreate that the best we can. What I do first is make sure that this is not highlighted. 
so make sure that is off this should be highlighted though definitely what you're gonna do is take this top portion this exact point right here in the pan and crop and then just click and then drag upwards make sure you don't drag like this you have to make it so that like the text is only slightly smaller than it was originally like around this point and if you want you can also drag a bit at the bottom one just by a teeny tiny bit again don't go overboard with this and then you have to go eight frames forward one two three four five six seven eight and then right click hit restore everything restores to its rightful place then you just right click the first keyframe set it to fast right click the second keyframe set it to smooth and that's basically it <laughs> now you can just animate the text like before again right click edit generated media make sure you click this animate clock and then make sure whenever you want to change the text you just hit s on your keyboard making sure the text layer is highlighted when you hit s and then you just change this to whatever you like There you go, right click on the first clip, hit copy, and then you can actually highlight this second clip, hold shift, click on the last bit, and then hit paste. And that pastes it to every single clip that you highlighted. And usually if you end the text, I usually put a fade of around 5 frames. I think I went too hard on the drag out here. Just really make sure that it's like the slightest, like the super slightest. So yeah, I'm just going to repaste that and then preview it again. So this is what it looks like. See, I'd say that's pretty close. It might be close enough for most people watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, leave a like if you want to see more tutorials on how I do specific things. Again, even though I'm doing this on Vegas Pro 17, I feel like similar advanced editing softwares will have the same-ish concept on these kinds of subtitles. So yeah, try your best to apply it even though you're not using the exact program. But yeah, this looks pretty cool. It's pretty clean. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video whenever that comes out. Bye!